flights and hotel prices. And signs everywhere, but they are not necessarily in English. Very crowded city. Some of the regular tourists are actually avoiding heat strokes, littering, smart Olympics, volunteer, rent, and everything goes up. After effects on the economy. Hey guys and gals on Ask Japanese, it's Kathy Cat. This time we're going to talk about 10 things we are worried about when the Olympics come to Japan. Number one, flights and hotel prices will go up. And we don't know how much they're going to get. Up. I mean, the beginning of the year it was kind of fine. Actually, flights were pretty cheap, but we can't tell how it's gonna be once the Olympics actually start in Japan. And hotels here in Japan, generally, you do not pay per room, you pay per person, which means if you thought this is a good deal, if you, however, come with a friend or with a partner, it might be double the price because you pay per person. Also, be careful about that when you book your hotel. So, uh, quite a lot of ways of staying and coming here might change money-wise so don't forget to get yourself a japan rail pass before you come to save yourself a little bit on the travel inside of japan yes, I was here. japan has a system for everything a system for standing in line and a system in which line you're supposed to stand and a system in which area you're supposed to walk there are arrows and signs everywhere but they are not necessarily in english and we are worried about that some of the instructions that are given to people on the different places might not be in English or if they are they might not be as easy to understand. The general worry is that the foreigners who come to Japan for the first time might not be able to understand some of the systems that are here in place. So I hope it will be easy to understand but even with the ticking book ticket booking system I went through that when I booked or tried to book and didn't get them the tickets for the Olympic Games. It, that was kind of also very complicated I found so yeah i hope yeah com no so not such complicated systems will be in place by the time the olympics are here <laughs> tokyo is already a very very crowded city and it will be a lot more crowded when the olympics come to japan however the thing we are worried about is there will be foreigners who are not used to crowds meaning they won't know what to deal with when they get there and how to deal in that kind of environment if you've come here after a while you realize how you have to you have to behave in a crowd and so <laughs> things like that <laughs> and uh, on that note um there might be people who not stand in line there might be people who panic there might be people who push and that's what you don't get usually so i hope when we get those more crowds people will be fine and will be able to deal with it and I just hope everyone will be safe. What are you doing? <laughs> the people that generally come to Japan seem to be not coming, which means some of the regular tourists are actually avoiding the Olympics, which means you're gonna get a very different crowd of foreigners coming in. Most of the foreigners that we found here and that we interviewed here said they. Oi! <laughs> they said they on purpose are trying not to come here during the Olympics because they want to avoid the panics, the crowds and the people who are not aware of Japanese culture. So yeah, it's not actually attracting the usual tourists. <laughs> Stop it. Heat strokes! During 2018, we had a heat wave right at the time when the Olympic Games were supposed to be, and it was so much hotter than expected, which means we might get that again. Luckily, we didn't get that 2019, so this year we might be safe, but 2018 was incredibly hot. Even like around 12, it was already way over 30 degrees with high humidity, which means athletes that are <laughs> athletes that are from countries that don't have that climate will struggle. And guests who will be sitting there, they will not be able to maybe cope with that heat. <laughs> the director is in a really good mood today. They might not be able to cope with that heat. Also, the big Olympic Stadium in Tokyo doesn't have air conditioning. So, 
I'm worried about people getting heat strokes. There's probably going to be quite a lot of signs to raise awareness to tell people do not get heat strokes, try to drink a lot of water, try to keep your body cool. But, you know, not everyone will listen to that. So hopefully everyone will be fine. Littering! <laughs> no, I'm saying this in a happy voice, but it's really, really not good. Tokyo doesn't have many trash cans, and that has been a recent problem because with all the tapioca boomers, tourists will drink the tapioca milk teas and then don't know where to put them because there are no trash cans. So, what will happen is that they will actually just throw them somewhere in the 100 points and they will throw them somewhere like in the area or just put them on a wall or put them in places it's like in the whole city will struggle with that because there are not enough trash cans you're supposed to carry that thing back home or to your hotel or you're supposed to how am i supposed to focus on this video director you are supposed to at least if you have trash carry it with you all day or return it to the store you got it from if you can't find a bin so how is that going to be? Are people actually going to abide that? Are we going to have a really dirty Tokyo? We're going to find out in a few months time. This time the theme is Smart Olympics, meaning not spending too much time on the Olympics. But already quite a lot of money has been spent. A lot of money has actually been spent and some money has been spent on areas that didn't really need it spending on and then it didn't work out in the end so money has already been spent in the wrong places however in some areas money is not being spent enough as what we can see online so how is that going to affect the actual olympics have things been saved that shouldn't have been saved like i mentioned the stadium the big big olympic stadium does not have air conditioning they're going to try and get like wind in blow wind in somehow to keep it cool <laughs> but I'm not sure if that was such a smart decision. We will find out though when the games are on and it's really hot. <laughs> Which leads to the next problem, volunteer exploitation. Quite a lot of people have been asked to volunteer during the Olympics and generally if you have time and you want to do that, it's fine, but it has almost been a little bit expected and there's been a little bit of pressure on certain people to do things for free for the Olympics, even though they don't really have that time. <laughs> They're actually too busy. Don't forget, in Japan, being able to take a week of work is a big deal. So taking a week of work, but then having to help the Olympics, that's your holiday for the whole year. You're not getting that back. <laughs> so there's been quite a lot of people who have criticized the way of it's just like, yeah, yeah, all of you come, come volunteer for us because, you know, we need, we need volunteers. And that's a good thing if you have people who have the time and want to do it. But some people are kind of almost pushed into doing it. And it sounds a little bit like they're making use of free workers and also the schedule seems to be really strict, like eight hours of work. You have this, you have this, you have this. So yeah, exploitation is a big issue there. I hope there won't be so many bad stories from the volunteers once the Olympics come. I hope they have a good time and I'm really very, very grateful for everyone who wants to volunteer. But I think expecting it so much and exploiting the volunteers might be an issue during that time. <laughs> With the Olympics coming up, certain areas of Tokyo are getting more and more popular. For example, the area where I usually wear my fashion, Harajuku. Now, the downside to that is that certain areas now are getting so popular with so many tourists that the rent and everything goes up more and more and more and more and the general stores who actually used to represent Harajuku, they have to move out. The whole area on Takeshita Street, for example, that rent is so expensive that many of the stores really are struggling making do and the rent is going up more and more and more because it's almost if, like a flagship ship store you know it looks pretty if you have a store on Takeshita Takeshita is the place everyone goes for Takeshita hundreds and thousands of people every day so the rent goes up the actual establishments that used to represent Harajuku struggle to stay and we're losing a little bit of that culture that used to be there and that's just an example of Harajuku I'm sure there are other places in Tokyo where the same thing is happening and that's a real shame you know when you want to come to Japan you want to see the real Harajuku you don't want to have just tourist drop sh shops because those ones keep popping up so how is Harajuku gonna look and how are certain parts of Tokyo gonna look after the Olympics like once you know things change again what we're we gonna get I don't know 
And finally, the after effects on the economy. Pretty much every country who has the Olympics afterwards gets into a big economical down. How is Tokyo going to deal with it? I mean, they tried to cover it with the Smart Olympics, but it looks like they still had to spend a lot more money than they thought they would have to. So how is the economy of Japan, of Tokyo looking after that? We are going to find out once we get there, I guess. So those are some of the things we are very, very worried about when the Olympics come to Tokyo. Is there anything else you would like to add that you're worried about when the Olympics come? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe for more stuff here from Japan and leave us a like on the way out. Thanks for watching Ask Japanese and I'll catch you soon. Bye.